All right. I've been asked by a couple people, mainly Ben, <laughs> uh, my installer, for a little bit of a tutorial video on how I do my chassis designs, specifically the Eco chassis. Uh, Master chassis is a little bit more involved, so um, I won't go that deep in this one, but we'll just do a quick Eco chassis. Uh, this is the Valkyrie hilt that I'm doing. I needed to rework the chassis anyways for this, so I figured I might as well use it as uh, the demo. So first thing I want to do is you want to have your hilt in CAD. Um, this one was easy because I already did the design for the hilt myself, so I have it ready to go. If you're working from an existing hilt, then I would take measurements with calipers. Um, kind of rebuild the interior shape. You don't really need to get all the details, just the basic shape um, of the interior, um, where the buttons lay, where the screws come through, etc. And uh, rebuild that in CAD to the best of your ability. Um, if you're doing an extremely simple chassis, you can probably just get away with the internal diameter of the section that you want the chassis to sit in. Uh, for this one, we'll do fully removable um, with a tactile switch, speaker, NeoPixel, battery, uh, Profi, etc. Uh, the next thing I will do is I'll come over here, right click. Oh, uh, before you get started, uh, I've set this up so that you can see my uh, mouse clicks and keystrokes as I work, so that hopefully that helps you guys. Um, left click will show up as blue, uh, right click will show up as red. So first we want to right click on your project uh, up here and do a new component. I'll call this, uh, I've started calling my basic chassis Acolyte chassis since Rick has asked me to choose more unique names than the ones he uses. Um, so you'll see here if we have this selected as the active component it makes everything else semi-transparent. Um, I don't like to work this way because I find it a little bit distracting so I'll just come back up here and do that. Um, it's important to note that when you have your uh, project or your component set as the active component all of the sketches and bodies created will automatically populate underneath that component. If I come back up here and I start here and start doing work, it'll add the sketches and the bodies up here. I'm fine with that. Uh, it's up to you if you want to have it that way for yourself or not. Um, and then I also like to do a couple standard sections. So there is an item here, and I've already added it to my toolbar, but it won't be there for you guys, it's called section analysis. If you want to add that to your toolbar, click the inspect button here. Come down to section analysis, click this little hamburger menu, and pin to toolbar. This lets us do kind of a cutaway section of the uh, design so we can see what, what it looks like at different cut um, sections. So I like to do a couple basic ones to start with. So we'll do both the vertical planes, just select a plane, hit OK, and you can see that it's now cut our tilt in half, turn that one off. I'll do the other plane like so. Again, this is, I have the hilt centered on the origin, so uh, if you don't have your hilt centered on the origin here, then you'll need to align it uh, or uh, use a different reference point for your section. And then um, we'll just start with those two. Uh, sometimes I do uh, one that cuts it through the vertical length, but there's I don't really know where to put one right now, so we'll leave it uh, off for now. And I'll turn, might name this uh, back section, make sure I got that right, yeah, back section. And then this one, side section. Okay, so then the first thing we want to do is we want to look at what we've got for our internal space. Um, 
So in here, I've got this vertical, so it's not the best use of real estate, but in here you can see we've got a little bit more. If you click here, it'll show us the radius. So that's 28 millimeters here, radius, exactly the size of a speaker. Um, here it's 28.5-ish, a little bit more than that. Uh, and then up here we're at an inch, uh, no, 22 less than an inch. So that's about 7 eighths inch diameter up here. The actual emitter section here is an inch. Um, I'm going to stop my design here. Uh, that gives a ton of blade purchase in this hilt. So it'll be great for flow and light combat. I mean, probably heavy combat if you wanted, but it'll be uh, really sturdy to have the blade all the way down here. That does leave a large gap between your blade plug and the chassis, but it also means that I can make it fully removable without having gaps between the edge of the chassis. It'll be more stable this way. Um, and we'll get some interesting uh, shine through down here with these vents. So I'll have it stop here for the top and come probably down to here. This leaves a good venting section for a reverb on the speaker. Uh, this is a large hilt, so we've got plenty of space to work with, so I'm fine leaving these large gaps in around the chassis. Um, so what I'll do first is I'll select this face and I will create a new sketch and it'll auto-orient me. Let's turn off the blade plug so I can see what I'm looking at and disable the sections. Uh, so you can see here, it's lined it up here with the edge. So it's automatically grabbed that uh, surface that we selected and put it into the sketch. Um, so I'm gonna turn off the, actually, let's create a new component real quick. Call this hilt and move all of these into hilt. Okay. Now I can turn off the hilt with one go using this visibility toggle. And I can turn off the chassis with the same way. So we will leave the chassis on, turn the hilt on for now. Go here. If you've created a sketch and you want to go edit it, just right click and go edit sketch. That pulls it back into the sketching mode. Um, I will, oh, because, hold on sketch here's another good tip um, if you create a component and then make the sketch the sketch will show the component while you're sketching if you make the sketch and then create the component because this is parametric the order in which you do things matters so you can see down here in our timeline I made the chassis component I did the sketch and then I did the hilt component so now when I edit the sketch it doesn't know that this component exists so what I'll do is I'll click and drag this and you can move it in the timeline. And we want to move it all the way to the end. Actually, it doesn't want to do that. So what we'll do instead, we'll just delete that item. So we don't have a sketch anymore. Um, I do want to give a disclaimer. I'm not a CAD expert. I don't do this for my day job, everything I know I'm self-taught on. And so there's going to be a lot of things that I do that professional engineering CAD drawers will cringe at probably and dislike. Um, but I do this more in a freeform kind of art, art sort of approach to it. Um, I use it as a tool for my designs, but I'm by no means trying to make perfect engineering drawings. So uh, keep that in mind. But uh, we'll come back in here, we'll start the sketch again on that same surface, that lip where the uh, 7 8 inch neck ends. And now we can turn off the hilt and we have just our sketch. And you can see it's shaded where the internal body of that sketch is. Any enclosed area in the sketch is going to be shaded. Um, open areas will not. And so what we want to do is we have this here is 23.5 millimeters in diameter. We want to come in with the new circle tool and right on the origin, 
come out here. We could go to 23.5, but we want to give just a little bit of space so that there's room for it to slide in and out. Um, and we have tolerance for printing error. So if you're printing at home uh, with an FDM printer, I would go about 0.1 millimeters on each side. So you come down to, you want to do in half, so it would do 3.3. Uh, that gives you 0.1 millimeters on all sides of your uh, chassis to for print error and sliding in and out of the, the hilt. For uh, SLS prints like at Shapeways, uh, I'm comfortable going with 23.4, giving only a half a millimeter. Um, we'll do this one today, 23.3. And so that created our circle there. Now we want to make a body out of this. And so I'll turn the hill back on so I have a reference for how far we're going with this. Uh, turn on our side section. And then you go up here and you select that innermost circle. You'll see that there is a slight gap here, that 0.1 millimeters. And we'll extrude it all the way to here. And you just click this face and it will extrude all the way down. I hit ex E for extrude, by the way. Um, you can see my uh, key taps down here in the corner. And that shows us it's 208 millimeters long. We want to make sure that's a new body. We don't want it merging with the hilt. It shouldn't because the hilt is in its own. Oops, need to make sure we're on that. There we go. Now it need a new body. Uh, won't do it under the hilt. It'll come under the top level here. And hit OK. We've got our new body now. And we can turn off our hilt for a moment. And it looks like. Oh, it went back to the hilt, that's why. I was like, it's transparent, what's going on? Um, so under here you'll see our bodies, and that, that shows what we've created on the top level. Uh, it's still in section view, but if I turn off the section, you'll see this. Um, we'll turn the section back on, turn the hilt back on, and you'll see that there's a large gap here. And so, because this is a different diameter than this. I just did this to give a good starting point. What I'll do now, and you, there's a couple ways you can approach this. You can either split your body here, um, using the split body tool. Uh, then you could pull that face out to this wall. Or we can come down here, start a new sketch on the bottom here, turn off that hilt. Uh, and pull out a circle. But we don't really remember what size the internal diameter of the hilt was. So we'll turn the hilt back on. Click this face, and then down here we'll see 14.263. So come back down here, do our circle, and the circles by default in Fusion will be diameter based. So right now, uh, what I'll do is I'll do 14.263 times 2. And you can actually do math in here as you're typing in your constraints, and it will calculate out and get you the final value. Um, I will also subtract 0.2 from that to give me that tolerance on around the edges and click OK. So we're at 28.326 and select both. Well, I guess we only need to select the outer one. So this will create two circles. Um, the inner one is the bottom of that existing body and the outer one is the one we just drew. So we'll turn off the hilt again. We'll select that outer ring and we'll extrude it up and then turn the hilt back on, see where we're landing. And we can we want to come up to here. And I don't want to go all the way up to there because again, printing tolerance is a little bit of room for wiggle. Uh, we'll go uh, minus, uh, in this case plus because we're going the negative direction. Point one. And it gives us a little bit of a gap there. Hit OK. And now we've more or less filled up our entire space here. Uh, this is how I start most of my eco designs. I'll fill the space entirely um, and then start cutting away with components. And I'll show you how to add components here in a minute. Um, the other bit, we probably want to grab 
this and remove that from the uh, from the chassis as well. Um, but we'll wait to do that. So we'll turn off the hilt for now. We have our basic chassis body, and then we'll start cutting away from this to make the full design. So now we want to start adding in our components. And we'll come in here, you go to wherever you have your saved component files. I have them all under my components folder in Fusion. And I have all of these guys, and I'll, so I'll pick out the things that I'm going to use in this design. Uh, first, I'll grab the short pin NeoPixel and right click and do insert into current design. Pull that in here and that throws it in here and it's got a link and this link means that you can't edit this in this file. It's only it's a linked uh, copy of this existing document. And so if you want to modify this, you have to go edit the document. Um, you can do edit in place, but I found it to be a little bit glitchy. Um, and with complex designs, it can it can cause crashes and stuff. So I I prefer not to do that. Um, and then we want this to line up with the top of our chassis. So what I'll do is rather than just try and drag this and get it where I where I want it, I will use these point to point controls. And so we'll select the origin point as this ring here, the top of that PCB, and then the target point we will select the top of our chassis body. And then it, you can see here the LEDs that I've modeled stick up just a little bit and this joint in the pogo pins also sticks up above this. This isn't great for the connector because it can stress these. Um, you'll basically be bottoming out on the LEDs rather than the chassis. Uh, the chassis is a little bit stronger than those LEDs. So what we'll do is we will switch back to free move and we will back this off just enough that the LEDs disappear. Uh, we can check our section here. Uh, if you hit Control Five, that'll give you a. It'll show all lines whether they're hit, hidden or not. You can see this is a little bit low because we're going in half millimeter increments. So what I'll do is I'll come down and I'll just lower this about 1.2, and that puts the LEDs right at below the edge there. We'll hit OK. Uh, turn that back on, turn off the section, and then control 6 will go back to visible edges only. And that's where I prefer where control 5 can get really messy as you add everything in and it can be hard to see what's going on. So control 6 will get us back to that visible bodies only. Um, so I've got the NeoPixel connector, we'll come in here. We also want our Profi, I have a couple versions, let's use this one because it looks nicer in renders. Um, this guy will just kind of give it a rough location. Uh, I want to put it up here in the neck. Uh, there are lots of, you could put it down here, there's lots of space. Um, this is basically where you want it. Uh, so we'll do our section. I'll turn the hilt back on again so we can see where that button is so I don't line it up with the button. Um, and then I probably want the USB facing outward and I'm going to put it at about a 20 degree angle to the uh, vertical so that it's easier to get the USB in there and the SD card out. So I'll rotate it around so USB is facing out. Scoot this just a little bit up and then we'll rotate it 20 degrees this direction. So that will put us right there. And so here's where the other section will come in handy. Um, so I'll put this here, I'll say okay. Uh, this puts it in the middle of that body. It won't be visible if we turn off the section, hide the hilt. You can see it's hidden inside. This is good because it means that nothing's poking out. But we can also do this where we come in here, do another section analysis, and we'll start at the bottom here and work our way up. And as we scroll, you can see as we go through what the sides of that profi are lining up to, and they just barely don't hit the edge of the hilt, which is good. So I will call that good right there and leave it. Um, sometimes I use this section tool and I'll just scroll up and down and then I'll just cancel because I don't want to save that view. I just want to see what's going on. Uh, so we've got our profi in there. We want to put a tactile switch under the button. So I use these B3 FS 1000s a lot. Um, I actually want to try 
the stock one, this stock custom stock custom works switch PCB. Um, this is a smaller version, gives a little bit more space in there. So we'll insert this one into the design. And it's got the nice little solder pads, so we don't have to worry about soldering those tiny legs. So we'll rotate that around. I want the pads facing down. Come to the side. Rotate this up. And then I'll turn off the chassis for a moment. Oh, turn off the body there. And then. Uh, point to point. So what we'll do is we want this button portion centered on the plunger of the switch like so. So we do again that point to point. Origin point is the button. Target point is the plunger. Hit OK. And now that's lined up there nicely. Um, let's come back in here. We want a 28 millimeter base speaker, so we'll use the Smuggler's Outpost design. Insert that into here. Slide this up here. This is already centered, so I don't really need to do much, but just to make sure that we're in the right spot, I'll again, use that point to point, bottom ring to the bottom here. And then that should line up perfectly with the body. Yep. Um, what else do we want? We need the battery, so. I'll probably use a 21700. Uh, where my battery is. I could use a Nightcore, but they've been kind of out of stock, so I'm trying to look for the other ones. Ah, here they are. 21700. Let's do this design. So the model I have doesn't have a button top, this is a flat top, but it'll work for what we need. Uh, so I'll move this up here. And then the other thing we want to do is we want our battery not to be centered. If you put it dead center of the hilt, you waste a lot of space. Um, so what I do is I will come to the side. Again, you can use this cube up here to give you your side corner views, etc. This is the best way to make sure you're oriented correctly. So I'll come in here and I'll slide this left to right and we'll find that looks about right. I might give an extra half millimeter of space just so we have a little bit of room. That way we're not catching on the hill with the battery wrap. Um, and then in terms of height Probably, I mean, we've got a ton of space in here. There's going to be a lot of empty space in this hilt, uh, in this chassis design. But uh, we'll just put it down here. It makes it a little easier to get at um, without having to pull the whole thing all the way out. So you want enough space for your uh, connector tabs, contact tabs for the battery. And uh, I put a kill switch on either the uh, one of the ends. You want to use probably the positive end. It's a little easier to wire that way. So I'll flip the battery around so we can have the kill switch lower and we'll leave it about. So we're right now we're about 17 millimeters. So th this should give plenty of space between the speaker and the battery uh, right about there. We can always come back and change that later. And then the last thing I think for this design just to make this quick and easy to kill switch. Um, I wasn't doing this for a while because I do removable batteries for most of my designs, but I have found that like sometimes people want to just easily turn off the power and it also makes shipping easier because we can ship without the battery in contact so there's no risk of it draining. Um, so what I'll do is I'll start adding these into most of my designs. Uh, and we want to put that by the positive terminal that allows us to do a quick wire from the positive to the this guy. Um, and then you can use the post as a base point for all of your positives um, if you need that, or you can run it up to the connector or the profi. Um, and then we'll come back over here, turn off this guy, we'll turn off the hilt. Let's see, that looks good there. Uh, maybe back that.
step just a little bit. Give it 5.5 millimeters. That should, yeah, stay behind the battery. You want to stay a little bit recessed so you're not catching on anything. Uh, should stay inside the body. Okay, we're good there. Um, what else do we need? I don't think we need anything else. We could add uh, the battery tabs in here. I have a kind of a set design. I'll show you guys for those. Um, so I don't really need them for my work, but if you want to put them in, I'd add those. Um, could do a crystal chamber. This is just an eco chassis though, so I'd probably skip that. Uh, I might do some NeoPixel accent strips, um, but these are a little bit uh, more decorative for, for rendering rather than actually useful for the design because they're pretty simple uh, primitive shape. So we will call this good here. And now we start working on the actual chassis body. So. I have a few dimensions memorized, uh, not all of them, but uh, some that I'm familiar with, like the dock connectors, the speaker dimensions, the battery dimensions, those things, things I use in every chassis. Uh, those get stuck in my brain, so I don't really need to remember or write them down or use the body to build off of the, um, the cuts into this chassis. Um, so we'll do a sketch on this top end and I always put, so the connectors are 17.5 millimeters for stocks, TCSS are 18.5, and the cantinas are 18.4. So we want to, um, you wanna do your design for whichever you're using. I'm gonna do it for the stock one, so we'll do 17.5, and then I give an extra 0 0.05 millimeters, and that gives me just enough that I can get a, like a press fit in there maybe with a tiny bit of glue if needed um, in the SLS prints. Um, if you're doing at-home prints, then I'd go up to probably 17.65. Um, we'll do 5.5 for this. And then finish that sketch. And then we'll come down here, turn on our side section again, grab this surface in the sketch, and we will extrude down and what I do is I click the bottom of the PCB and that gives us a good extrusion, 2.8 millimeters. I have this again memorized, but it shows you guys how I came to that number. Hit okay. Um, and then I'll turn off that NeoPixel connector, come to the top again, turn off our section, click that inner surface that we just extruded and do another sketch. We'll do a circle here, and then I do 16.5 millimeters for the space. This gives just a little bit of a lip for the connector to catch on. It can't slide past that. Um, works great in my experience. Uh, we'll come down here, and we'll just extrude that a little way, so we don't need to go very far, maybe just five millimeters for now. And that just gives us a starting point. Um, then we can turn on our connector. You can see this lines up nicely. The pins are exposed enough for solder joints and it will press fit in there. Next I'll come in and do the switch body. Another reason this switch PCB is nice um, so we can just extrude that out to give room for the PCB. So uh, we'll turn off the body and the section. So we'll come here we'll do a so you can just straight extrude this surface, but you'll be left with these holes. So you could come in here and but there's a hole here, so you can't really do anything about that. So what I'll do instead, is I'll do a sketch on that surface. Just hit finish sketch. And that just gives me a sketch of this whole area and it'll even include these holes. So I'll turn off the switch PCB. We have this thing, we can click and drag to select all of those uh, faces in that sketch and turn on our body again hit E to extrude and just drag it out cut through the body like so um, a lot of my designs will have radiuses or radii uh, if you want to uh, remove those for your design you can um, or not uh, but what I'll do now is I'll come in here and add a little bit of print tolerance around the edges here so that when 
and get the final product. The PCB sits in there without any sanding. So we'll just do a Q for press pull. Um, you don't want to do an extrude because you can only extrude one face at a time. Uh, so Q will attempt to move the face and modify the body and so we can do multiple faces at the same time. So I do Q for all four sides and I'll do a negative 0.1 millimeters and that gives me just a little bit of a buffer around it. And then the next bit is we have these pads here we need a hole um, to run wires to. So we will turn off the switch PCB, click this face, um, do a new sketch here, and we could just do the rectangle tool like this. Uh, you can see it lines up nicely, um, but it doesn't always work that way. So what I'll do instead, is hit escape to deselect that tool, so I'll hit P for project, and then I'll click these pads, and I'll hit OK. And so what this does is it takes the shape of this pad and projects it onto our sketch. So if we turn off the switch, we have a nice little drawing of the pads from that PCB on the body. We can hit finish sketch, and then we can select these guys, and just extrude backwards. So this is going to give us tiny little holes. Uh, so what I'll do is from here is I'll just kind of remove these radii and this is where I probably do things not the best way but just what I do. I'll extrude that face back to cut away that wall um, and then I'll push, actually I'll probably just push these guys out with Q for press pull all the way and then you can click once you so once you if you're here and you click a face here actually let's do this press pull uh, if I just click this it'll or it won't usually it adds to the selection um, oh I wonder actually press pull then I select faces yeah, okay, well actually that works. I don't know why it's doing it that way, but that's fine. So we'll press pull out to these walls, like so. Again, I'm not a CAD expert. I, this is not my bread and butter, so to speak. Um, and then I'll probably just take this one and extrude that back to here to remove that. And then I'll probably pull this one up a good half a millimeter. So what this will do is it'll give us enough room, we'll do that side section, around those pads. Actually I'll pull this up another half a millimeter just to give some more space for the wires. They give us enough room here now for to run wires to these pads. Um, okay, so we're getting there slowly but surely. Um, next we'll do the profi slot. Uh, we want to turn off this body, turn off this section. So select the bottom side of the profi, do a sketch, hit finish, turn off the profi body. We don't need these guys either right now, so we'll turn those off and just drag and select. Uh, it's easier to drag and select doing this rather than going one and then holding shift and or control and clicking the additional faces. So just drag and select everything. Turn that body back on, and we'll do an extrusion this direction because we want our USB to be accessible from this side. We'll hit OK. You can see it's cut a hole here, and you can see where this hole is starting to intersect with this one. We turn on our profi again. You can see where that's at here. We've still got to cut away some space for the USB port and the SD card. We'll get to that in a second. Turn on our side section. You can see. We also need to pull this down underneath for the components and the wires. So turn off the section, turn off the um, profi board, and we'll click this face, we'll do a new sketch. So what I do is I use the radii on the corners here to generate a lip. 
So um, it comes out to 0.762 millimeters on each corner. Um, before I did this, I just gave it 0.75, so it's roughly the same. So we'll get each of those corners drawn up, and then we'll connect these squares with rectangles on each long side of the profi. This gives that lip for the profi to sit on, um, and then we'll fill up the space in here as well. It's probably not, you don't need to do that because it'll fill it automatically, but I'll draw it anyways. Uh, so we'll come back in here to our side section, select that inner rectangle. So you want to leave the lips here for the profi, and then we'll extrude this down. Um, and so here's where I start thinking about things like wall thicknesses. For this design, you can see it's already cutting through over here. Um, I need for SLS printing, we need point seven millimeters for plastic and 0.8 for metal, uh, for brass metal, one millimeter for steels. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll cut this four millimeters. And we'll see here, if we select an edge here and a surface, it will should tell us the minimum distance between those two. It's not telling me the minimum distance between those two. Oh, because I already cut through the minimum distance is zero, so it's not gonna show it to me. But if it hadn't cut through, we could do something like this and this. And it shows the minimum distance down here in the corner, 1.6 millimeters. So we're plenty thick there on the wall. Uh, here, since we already cut through, what I'm just gonna do is probably just cut this all the way through but leaving this wall intact here. Um, so what we'll do is we'll come back to this back side. And this is where we start using construction planes. Uh, so if you go to construct, uh, by default I think offset plane is visible. I'm not sure if tangent is and mid plane. These are the three I use the most. Uh, we'll use the tangent plane and then we'll select a circular surface or cylindrical surface. Um, and click this and that will place it on that cylinder so um, it'll align with the view you're in if you're already in a view um, if you need to rotate it you can rotate it about the cylinder um, we are lined up the way we want so I'll just go here click OK and this gives us a, a new plane similar to the ones at the origin these guys um, but aligned where we want it um, so I'll use this plane Come back over here and we'll do a sketch and here is where you have two options I can't see what's on the other side of this I could spin it around and go back and forth and go crazy um, I could turn on the hidden lines edges with control 5 um, or if I go to control 6 I can come back over here hit P for project and select the surfaces that I care about and that will project them onto that sketch for me. And that tells me where everything is I'll align with the back again. So I really just want to cut out from here down and we'll give enough wall here around the switch for stability. Uh, we'll cut out like that, make this an even 20 millimeter and then select these faces finish the sketch and then select these faces and then just extrude through and you can see I've got a nice cut through there and it's worth noting that when you're working with 3d printing uh, services it's going to be cheaper if you reduce the volume of your material. So the less empty, useless material you have in the design, the cheaper your design will be. But you still want it to be strong and you still want it to meet the printability requirements. And so those are things you have to think about as you're designing these things. Um, next up, I will open this channel for the wires down to the profi just by extending that 
surface downwards using the extrude tool. And then we can turn on our not the hilt components. And you can see here, we're starting to get there. Um, we need to extend this out so we can get the USB. So what I'll do is just take that face um, and just extrude it downwards. You can see here, uh, this would be enough to expose it, but it would make it difficult to get that SD card out. So what I'll do is I'll probably just take this and take it all the way out like that. Cut all the way through there. We don't need the slip to go the full way around to catch. So if we do it like this, it leaves a nice big space for us to get the at the USB and the SD card. So turn that side section back on. And then the last thing up here, so we want to pull this channel for the wires on the switch PCB out so that we can get to the profi. Um, yeah, so technically this is all you need for this section, uh, the upper piece. Uh, we can get everything the wires could get through here, technically. Um, but it'd be a little bit tight, it'd be a little bit uncomfortable. So what we'll do is we'll come in here and we'll open some of these channels up a little bit. So I'll start by making this a little bigger uh, space underneath here. So you can get your finger in there and get the SD card out and there's more room for the wires. Um, so there's a couple ways you can do that. You can do it with a slot. Um, I'll show you guys a new tool, the offset tool. So when you're in a sketch and you're on a surface, you can use this offset tool. So turn off the profit for a sec. So we use offset and we click a line like this. It'll select the outer edge and you can set a distance to offset that edge and create a new line. Um, we want to go inward, so we'll go negative and we'll go 2.5 millimeters and hit enter to finish that offset and then hit finish sketch to finish the sketch. So now we've got a nice shape that matches that outer edge and we can extrude that and make room for the wires and the uh, SD card. So we'll turn our side section back on, select that face again, we'll extrude this downward so here's where you need to be careful because if you push this too far, this and this will get too close together and you'll either get a weak floor here for your PCB or it won't pass printability checks. So what I'll do is I'll do this extrusion. Um, got a little bit of extra wall. I'll show you how to take those, care of those in a sec. Um, and we'll do, actually rewind. Let's do Control Z, Control Z, undo that. If we select this, then I don't need to worry about the wall. So I'll go minus four again. Yeah, nice and clean. Um, so let's check the distance here between this edge and this face. That is currently 1.66 millimeters. Um, I can go down to 0.7 technically, but buttons get a decent amount of pressure on them. I want to leave as much space behind there as I can, so I'm going to leave it where it is. Um, we can always take away more down this direction if we want. Um, this guy can probably be extruded this direction. That will pull that out, give us a little bit more room for wiring. And let's turn on our components and see where we're at now. So now we've got a ton of space in here. Uh, this is more than enough for the wiring. Um, one place I think that would be good to add a little bit more space is under here, because we're going to have some wires that come under here, and this is going to get a little bit of a pinch point. So I'll select that edge, and we'll use the chamfer tool. We'll just pull this back, and I just kind of look at it as I go. Um, if you chamfer too far, this will get narrow and flag printability checks. Um, what I'll do is we could just do this equal distance one. I'm going to do a two distance. This gives us the ability to do different distance uh, in the Y versus the Z. Uh, so I'll pull this one up. And that gives us a little bit more room there for the wires. Yeah, that looks good. It's just kind of a feel thing, I think. Um, and 
And I think this, we can also open these up. I like to, anytime we have wires coming into a slot or a channel, I like to give chamfers or uh, fillets around the edges so that they are not hard edges cutting into those wires so we're not stressing the wires as much. So what I'll do is I'll turn off this side section, turn off the profi, I'll select these edges here. I'm gonna, this might not fill it nicely, but we'll try it because of that radius. Uh, select the outer edges there and we'll do a chamfer. Yeah, so it doesn't want, let's do an equal distance chamfer. Oh, there, it actually does work, okay. Uh, but yeah, so we're, we're seeing some issues here because it, at a certain distance it doesn't want to calculate that because of the radius. So what I'll do is if you hit control while you're in the middle of a chamfer, it lets you change which edges are selected. So if we just do this one, so I'll pull this one out of ways and we'll do the side section view again. It gives us a lot of space for wires, a lot of flex. Um, and no pinch points, so I think this is good enough for what we are after. We'll do that like this, that. Okie dokie. All right, so I think we're done up top um, with the basic design, the shape at least. Um, and we'll move down to the battery section. I'll start at the speaker. That's the easiest part down here. Uh, our speaker, if we turn off this body, this outer radius is 11.925, and this one is 13.93. There is almost 28 millimeters diameter. Um, and then our height is 11.122 millimeters between the bottom face here and here, or going from here to here, 8.85. So what I'll do is, knowing those dimensions, actually, let me double check. This one was 11.925, that's the radius. So we'll turn off that, turn the body back on, turn off our speaker. Uh, that's not the speaker, that's the speaker. And then do a sketch on the bottom of that body. And we'll do, 11.925 times 2 and then plus 0.2 gives us a little bit of a tolerance and then we'll do extrude backwards negative 11.5 and that should give us clearance on the speaker yep there we go um, and then these edges here are clipping so what we want to do here off the speaker again and we'll do Q. I can turn the speaker back on to see where we're at and push that back two millimeters. Um, and then the last bit for the speaker is you'll see here, if we turn off the section, these guys will stick into that body. Um, we'll go this section here. Yeah, you can see it's clipping through the wall there. So what will come do is turn off the speaker again, turn off the section, select that bottom face, do a sketch. Um, sometimes it rotates when you do a sketch, so I will turn the speaker back on just to make sure we're in the right orientation. Yeah, so these are on the left and right here, so that's good. Turn that body back on, turn the speaker back off, and then I give about six millimeters this direction and cut all the way through here. Uh, that'll give enough space around those speaker terminals to uh, sit nicely in the chassis. So select those two faces and we'll do an extrude and we'll go back, uh, we'll go six millimeters this direction. That might not be enough, let's see. Yeah, so six millimeters wasn't quite enough. So what I'll do now is I'll show you guys how I you can edit a feature. So if you come down your timeline, we can see this extrude I just did, and it'll highlight it if you hover. Um, and so we'll select this, right click, edit feature, 
and we can see the feature in progress. And so six millimeters wasn't enough, so we can come in here and drag this to change that to seven, or we can put a number in here like 7.5 to change it, and then hit OK to finish, and it will recalculate that feature for you. And you can go all the way back to the beginning and redo any of those features. Um, it can get messy though if you have uh, compounding um, dependencies. So if you change something and then you change something related to that, and then you change something else related to that one, if you go back and change the original thing, it'll change all of those. And it, sometimes that can cause computational errors and all kinds of things. So you gotta be careful with that, but it is a powerful tool. Um, and then that gives us plenty of space there. I'll turn off this section. We don't need this speaker on anymore. Um, okay, the next bit will probably be, we'll do the battery next. Um, so what I do for the battery is I will turn off the body. I take this bottom face and create a new sketch on the bottom of the battery. Um, we want to make sure we're on the right edge. Yeah, so this is the edge we want to cut out of. Um, so we'll turn off these other components because they're kind of obstructing our view. You can see the battery here. So what we'll do is a slot. I do a center to center. Um, you want to find the center of your battery actually. You can see my battery actually came in a little bit off center here. So this is a good catch because otherwise our battery slot would be off center. So what we'll do instead is we'll find that center and measure the distance to the origin center line. And that is 0.23. So let's back out of the sketch. Control Z, undo, undo. Okay. So let's move that battery body over um, 0.23 millimeters. So hit M for move, and then drag this to give us some editability, and then hit 0.23, enter. Now we can come in here, hit capture position. Anytime you move a component, It'll ask you, do you want to revert to the previous position or do you want to capture the current position for your sketch? Um, so you want to do capture, otherwise your things are going to be in a different spot than what you think they are. So hit capture position. Um, turn off those same things again, the NeoPixel and Profian switch. And now if we come in here and do the center to center slot, you can see here it lines up right with that center line. We're good to go. So for this, we'll come out and I'll just pull it a distance I know is gonna be outside the body far enough. And I'll click OK to give the length of the slot and then you can drag to give the radius. Um, the, for an 18650, I will do 18.6 millimeters. That's plenty. Uh, it gives a nice snug, but um, enough room that you're not rubbing your battery wrap. Um, for this guy, uh, I believe, yeah, it's just, you can do 22, that's a little bit big. Um, I'll do 21.6, that's right at the edge of the battery, um, but it'll work. And then hit finish sketch, and we've got our uh, slot here. Um, you can select it like this, or if you turn off the battery, select it like this guy. And then turn on our chassis body. So we've got those faces selected. If we hit E for extrude, um, and we want to go down. And so I have this memorized, but you can check the length of your battery um, and add a little bit for the contacts. But for a 21700, I'll go 75 millimeters, uh, negative 75. Um, for an 18650, I go 70 millimeters. And that's if you're using those keystone contacts that I use with the button top. If you're using the larger spring style or uh, two leaf springs, then you probably want to adjust your design accordingly. We'll hit OK. We can check that fit on our battery. You can see it's almost perfect. There's just a little bit of space for battery contacts in there. Alrighty. I'm going to turn off the kill switch for now. Turn off the battery. And so then the next bit is going to be 
the spot for the uh, what are they called? The Keystone contacts. Um, I always use these Keystone 1010-1 and 1016 one contacts. They're my favorite. Um, they're robust. They don't break very easily um, from normal use and they take up very little space so it gives me plenty of room um, in any chassis design. So I will use these for my chassis. You can use other ones but uh, you'll need to figure out your own measurements for that. Um, so what we'll do is we'll come in here and we'll say insert into current design. So I have my positive at the bottom because I wanted the kill switch down towards the end of the hilt. So we'll rotate this around. We want these little tabs to face in towards the center of the chassis and the button to face up towards the battery. And we will do point to point. Select this ring here and come in here and select this ring here hit okay for now so you'll see this is coincident with that face it's not where we want it in the end um, I'll show you guys here in a second do this side view and the battery so this is actually not lined up with the battery so what we'll do is turn off the chassis body um, we'll select that positive contact M for move point to point select this and select this. So that'll line these up radially. Um, I still am gonna pull this back, but we'll wait and I'll show you where that goes. Um, and we'll turn off the battery for now. Turn on the chassis body. And then we will select this face, create a sketch, capture the position because we moved components around. Um, come down here and we want to project that body onto that surface again. So we'll turn off the chassis for a moment, hit P for project, uh, we turn off our section view as well, and click this face. Um, I'll also click these edges here um, and hit OK. And then what we'll do is turn that guy off. Uh, these are open here, so we'll close these off with some lines. And now we've got complete uh, faces there that we can extrude. Um, so I could finish the sketch there. I'm actually gonna do a couple more things. So I add little holes for these to stick through um, to catch on so it holds them in place without any glue, uh, similar to the keystone holders. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll come in here and drag across here like so and then I'll add a little bit on each side. Uh, point one and point one. And then hit, uh, actually we want one more rectangle here. So we want a little bit of a gap here between the opening for the button top uh, contact and these holes. So I'll add a one millimeter bar here. And I'll show you how all this works here in a second. So I'm kind of thinking about both positive and negative space of what I'm going to extrude. I hit finish sketch, turn that body back on. Uh, scroll out so I can see what we're doing. So we'll see here we've got this section here we want to extrude back. We also want to extrude where those tabs are and a little bit of wiggle room. And we'll leave this intact and this intact. And so we'll hit E for extrude. And then I will go negative 1.5. And then you can see here, we're starting to get there. Um, battery lines up nicely, exactly where we want it. Um, we'll do our section view. And select this wall here, extrude that out. Hit OK, that opens it up so we can slide the battery tab in, but we can see that this is still blocked up. Turn off that section view, select this face, and what I do is I give 
0.75 millimeter slot for that to slide into. It's exactly half. You know, it's, actually, let me show you what I did there. Um, if you come in here and select a corner and then you drag up, when it does this X with the triangle, it says we're coincident with the center line of this edge. So I know I did 1.5, and so I want 0.75, so I know half is 0.75, so I just quickly jump to that center line, hit OK, finish sketch. And then I will extrude this down to here, and we'll probably go a bit further. We can actually turn on the side section and our battery tab, and you can see how far I need to go. So five millimeters looks good. It gives us a little bit of wiggle room. Hit OK, and you can see the battery tab sticking up a little bit. That's fine. We'll move it down here in a second. It doesn't really matter because we're only making this body. We don't really care where this is for the production side of things. As long as these holes line up when we come to install it. Um, and then this last bit here, come down, select this face. Now we need room for the wire behind there. Uh, to solder on to the contact. So we will come down here and I give a four millimeter wide channel and two, two millimeters deep. So I will select here, drag out. <coughs> um, I'll drag further than the edge of the body just so we can make sure we cut all the way out. And I'll go two millimeters wide there, do the same thing over here two millimeters, finish sketch. And if we select both of these and this, we can do an extrude, negative two. And we've got our slot for the battery channels. And then this guy will sit nicely in there. We can run the wires off the back to the kill switch. We'll add to add more channels here, but that's the basic gist. Um, before we get there, let's go to the other side and do um, a sketch on the other end. So the sketch for the negative will be very similar. Um, so what we'll do is rather than redraw everything, we will simply hit P for project and select this face to project it down onto here. Hit OK, hit finish sketch, extrude these back, negative 1.5. Do the same thing we did on the other side. And cutting that backwards, negative five, and then we'll do another sketch here. This time we will project that channel. P for project, select that lower face, hit OK, finish sketch. E, negative two, ta-da. So this won't quite work because the layout is a little bit different here. So what we'll do is insert here. We can adjust based on where things line up. Um, I will rotate this 90 degrees this way, 90 degrees this way. Then we'll go point to point and select this bottom center point on the tab and come up here, we'll select here. And then we'll do a side section, we can see. We need to pull it down just a tad, so I'll go back to free move. Come down here and pull it down to about there. And actually, that came out pretty good. But um, to add some more strength, because we don't need this to come down so far on this one, because there's no button top, I will take this wall and I'll pull it with Q up to about here. I think it's a little bit more strength there, so if it flexes or gets pulled on by the battery wrap, it's not going to break that uh, thin wall here. This one is pretty thin. Um, and we can strengthen this other ways, but it'll be good enough for SLS prints. And then. I think the last thing we want to do is wire channels. So I'm going to skip the kill switch for now just because I'm running short on time and I want to wrap this up for the video. 
um, but we'll do the wire channels from the speaker and the battery up to the profi and we'll call it good um, so we'll come down here we'll do a sketch and I'll project our battery channel um, this guy come back to the bottom we can see this is where the bottom of the battery will land and then I'll also project this inner edge here so we can see where the inside there is and hit OK and then you have a couple options for how you can do this you can either draw a rectangle um, I like to do these center point arc slots this will be under uh, slot I believe yeah center point arc slot um, so we can select the center here come out to here drag out and make a slot that can be nice for this one I'm just gonna do a rectangle um, it's easy enough and I want to have the wires visible under the battery to make the routing a little easier. So we'll hit finish, come in here, select this area here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude that all the way up to there, just about. Actually, we'll pull it down just a little bit, give this, make this a little stronger. Cut that. Now we've got a nice big wire channel under there. We'll make sure this wall is, I know it's thick enough, but we'll check it anyway. So that's 2.138 millimeters, so that's plenty thick. Um, and then the last bit will be just opening this up here and these channels here. So we want to kind of just connect all of our wire channels. So what I'll do here is I'll do a sketch on the bottom of this section here. We'll select this back area, the 2x4. Two by four. Finish sketch. Pull that out so it cuts into this channel. Do the same thing down here. Finish sketch. Pull that out. Cuts into that channel. And um, here's where we can do something kind of interesting. So we could use this surface. I kind of I'm looking for a place to start a sketch to cut a channel here for the wires to run. So we have a few options. Um, what I'll do is I'll show you the offset plane tool. So we'll select this guy. Turn off that section for a minute. Select this. We'll do an offset plane here. So that'll start here, and then we can drag it up. Um, I like to give a few millimeters space behind the battery just for strength because this is going to get the most pressure from the battery pushing on it. So we'll give it four millimeters there. Hit OK. Turn our section back on. Now we've got a nice plane we can start with. Um, so we'll use this, create a sketch. And we really just need a channel wide enough for the wires. So what I'll do is I'll start at the center here. And I'll open this up. We'll go 14 millimeters, yeah. And you can see here though, if we just extrude this up, these want to be connected. So what I'll do is I'll make a slot comes out. Actually, we'll do the end to end slot. We'll start at this end. And we want our slot to end roughly there. And we'll make it 14 millimeters. So we got the full space there. And so now what I'll do is I will extrude just the circle up to here roughly. And then I want to extrude that slot as well, but the sketch disappeared. So what we can do is come back in here, turn the sketch back on, the visibility modifier. Select this. I'll select this again just to make sure there's no weird overlaps. And extrude this up to about there. We can turn our sketch off now. Now we've got a nice big wire channel running through there. Um, could be better uh, here. So let's start here. And we will project this surface onto the sketch so we can see where that is hit OK and then we want this we'll do an offset 
No, nope, that's not what I wanted. We'll do another line just like this. We'll give it two millimeters and then drag it out, drag it out. And then that'll leave this extrudable. So now we can just select that guy and extrude up to the profi, like so. And now that'll give us a lot more space. So yeah, I mean, if we turn on everything again, I didn't do the kill switch, so we'll leave that off. Um, but everything else, you can see, we have a basic chassis. Um, at this point, you can do lots of other stuff. Um, I will refine this based on like edges and stuff. So I'll come in here, I'll probably chamfer this so it's not sharp if it'll let me chamfer it. Yeah, there we go. Uh, then uh, for the battery channels, turn off that section. So this is going to be hard to get the battery out. You won't be able to do it without a tool. So what I'll do here, so I'll come to the side and I will do a sketch on this plane. And we will project the battery onto there and turn off all of these guys and this body. And you can see this is where the edge of the battery is. So what we'll do is we'll do a kind of a thing like this where can extrude that. Actually, I'm going to make that symmetrical. It's going to bug me. So what we'll do is we'll start here and drag to here. I've got a center line here. Um, this will go here. This will go here. And connect the two like so. Um, and then I can do mirror. Select this line, this line, and then select the mirror line that hit OK and then I will fill in this bottom portion here just a little actually I don't need to fill that in I need to fill this in because this is the section I want to extrude this bit here um, and actually we'll make this out to here Like that. Okay, so now we can turn the body back on. Select these faces, extrude them out, and turn that sketch back on. We'll do the same thing the other way. Or, rather, we can select this extrusion, hit the mirror tool, and then select our plane because we did it centered, and hit OK. And it'll do the same thing on each side. And then this also won't print because these edges are too thin just fails shape waste checks so what we'll do is we'll select those and give them a nice chamfer to pull them down a little bit make them a little thicker on the edge and then now when we turn on our battery you can see it's got a nice little area to grab onto we could even grab these and pull them back a little bit if we want this is all just feel at this point whatever feels good to you uh, I'll probably grab these edges here for those a little bit maybe get a little chamfer on these edges just rounding things out making them look a little bit more polished like you thought about it Anytime there's like a edge that would coincide, these can get kind of rough when they catch on things, so I always chamfer those a little bit. Um, uh, here's a good, another good example where we want to probably cut some space out, so we'll turn on the profi. See, this is going to be both. This is going to fail printability checks on these edges here because they're too narrow. 
And also it's a little hard to get the profi, so we'll just come in here and chamfer all of these edges. So it only let me go so far because of this radius, but that's fine. That'll at least pass our printability check now. Let's see, what else do we have? That's more or less it. Um, I will show you guys how to project something just so you can see how to do that. And you can do this with all kinds of things. So what we'll do is we'll select the cylinder. I'll do a tangent plane. Hit OK. Select this guy. Create a new sketch. We can put in some text here like so. Centered, centered, change the size here to something like seven millimeters. Yeah, we can change the font. I've got Arabesh fonts installed. You can do other ones. I'll do an Arabesh English, or actually, I'll just do Arabesh um, bold. Uh, that one looks a little bit crowded, actually. This one, I know won't work because it's not a TTF font. We'll do this one. We'll make these a little bigger now because this font's smaller. There we go. All right, got our text there. Hit OK. Hit Finish Sketch. Now we can select that. What we can do is this Emboss tool. Hit that guy. And then select the face we want to emboss it on. Hit that. and self-intersecting body. Okay, so this can happen with some of the fancier fonts. It'll, it's creating essentially a body that's not gonna work properly. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go back, we'll edit it, we'll change the font. Uh, just to make this easier. You can work around it with custom drawings and stuff, but um, let's just do this one. We'll call this. Okay, hit finish. Now this should emboss, okay. And so you can see it's doing a two millimeter emboss. We actually wanna deboss, go into the surface. So first of all, I'll change this to 0.5 so we don't get weird computational issues. Um, and then I'll change this to deboss and it should cut into the body, yeah, uh, just like that. I'll hit okay. Now we've got a nice text embossed in our body there. And you can do the same thing with all kinds of stuff. Um, we could do another tangent plane here, do some sketches, just draw some rectangles in here. Finish, emboss, select change that surface like so you can do that all over just detail it however you want add stuff like that there's a lot more detailing you can do but it gets kind of messy faster um, fast uh, there's a lot of complex stuff that can, you can get into um, we'll chamfer these out a little bit get some more space there and I'll probably Actually, what we need to do, I didn't think about this, is the hilt. Let's turn off the shroud and the emitter. You can see here our button is going to catch. And so we won't be able to slide this free. So what I'll do is I'll come up here, do a sketch. We will project, I'll turn off our body for a moment, this line and these lines. Hit OK. Turn our body back on, and we'll cut this out. Like so. Now we got our sketch and we want to cut all the way into this channel so we'll come 
down here and we'll click here and we can actually go further. I'll turn off the hilt so I don't cut into that. And cut it just like that. Now I've got a channel here. I'll probably just delete these edges. They're needlessly close. Sometimes deleting things can take a minute. And sometimes it can crash fusion. So let's hope it doesn't do that. This is an example of something that I do that I probably shouldn't have done. Deleting faces. There we go. Okay, it failed finally. So that's good. It means it didn't crash. Uh, so what's going to happen is I was trying to delete this, but we've got this weird lip here. So it's not going to want to delete it unless we delete that as well. Um, so we'll come in here and select all these faces. And then hit delete. Now it'll calculate properly. And sometimes we'll run into weird computational issues like that. Um, we'll do the same thing. Yeah, so I, I drew my sketch badly. That's why we're getting these lips here. Um, I could go back and edit the sketch. That's probably the proper way to go about this. I'm not gonna bother. I'm just gonna, actually I'm gonna leave this so it clocks nicely. I'll just delete the little lip. There we go. And we'll push these back just a little bit, probably 0.1 millimeters, just to make sure that there is room for it to slide. Negative point, we'll give it 0.2 millimeters with the push pull tool. And it's thinking, it's calculating. may not be able to resolve the change because sometimes if you move a bunch of faces simultaneously it can be a little bit computationally com complex yeah so it doesn't want to do that because of these fillets here so what we'll do instead is we'll delete these and come back to them we can do them again after we push pull so this is why you should think about these things before you do the fillets. I like to save fillets and chamfers for the last uh, negative 0.2. Yeah, see now it has no issues at all. So now we'll come back in here. We'll do our chamfers 0.5. This one. Chamfer looks like one. It might not even let us know. No, we can go 0.5, that's it. Um, because of the radius here. Actually, let's just delete this and this to simplify the shape a little bit. Eh, now it'll let me. Yeah, there we go. Right where I want it. And there we go. That's pretty much it. Um, we can turn the shroud back on, turn on all our components, and you can see with a side section view what we've created. So yeah, I mean if you guys like these kinds of tutorials I can do some more specific ones for things like uh, complex design uh, stuff that I do for master chassis, um, how I approach things like the uh, Valkyrie master chassis, which has a completely different design style to this. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. Peace.